So far, everything we have worked on is front end work. Now, we want to get this text and send it to Django because we want now to take the text from the user and send it to Python to also uh, or Django. I should say Python because technically Python is going to handle this and then it's going to do something with it but it's going to take the, the text from the front end and send it to the back end. But how can we do that? To do that we need to use again we need to use we, we need to make an Ajax request because if I if I don't do that the may the page would refresh and everything uh, will be lost and all of the messages between the chatbot and the user will be erased and we don't want that and instead we want the we want the page to be the same everything is the same all of the messages that have been sent so far uh, um, will be the, exactly the same here we only need to send the message to the back end while the page is uh, while the, the page uh, remains intact so what I'm gonna do is that in the in the index that HTML now in the get user response here we just display the text to the to inside the box and this is not enough of, co of course we need to send the text now to Python and to do that I'm gonna make Ajax request here to send the text from the front end to the back end so what I'm gonna do over over here is that I'm gonna make Ajax request so to, to make an Ajax request first of all what I want to do what, what I should do is that I should say here dollar sign and then dot and then get which is gonna be a get request get Ajax request and then the URL that we want to use so I'm gonna create the URL but I'm gonna create this later because I need to explain the structure of the URL because it's very very important and if you get this wrong it's not gonna work but for now just leave it empty and then comma and the second parameter is the data that you want to use that you want to send from the front end to the back end so the data that we want to send is the user text which is this user text and it should be sent in a in an object so the object is gonna have a key the key I'm gonna give it a key called user message and the value is user text just to distinguish between the the two so the user text is this user text that we got which is the text that that the user is going to type here and the user message would represent the the key that will be used in the python to access the message to access the text then we need to call a function called done and this function is going to um, uh, use a callback function to return the status uh, whether the the data has been sent or not so it's gonna take a callback function here function with the data that contains here data that contains whether whether uh, the request has been made successfully or not and whether the data has been sent successfully or not and it contains um, different things as well you can of course you can control what you want to return to the user but for now I'm gonna also leave this empty because I want to explain what I'm gonna do here later so now let's talk about the URL the URL is probably the most important thing here because this URL is gonna be used to send the data from the front end to the back end so now we need to create a URL so in the URLs here in the URLs that py that py I need here to say comma and then we need to create a new URL I'm gonna say here path and that path is gonna be used to send the data from the front end to the back end so the path is gonna be let's name it get response this is the URL itself and then the second the second uh, the second parameter is the function that we want to call upon upon sending the uh, uh, upon uh, uh, going to this URL. So upon going to this URL, what we want to do is that we want to call a function that's going to handle uh, that's going to handle uh, the data. So here I'm going to say views as usual views dot, and then the name of the function. Let's name it get response. It's very important to keep everything uh, consistent so that you don't get confused. Finally, the name. So the name of the URL, I'm going to give it a name uh, of get response. 
Now it's time to create this URL function, this, this uh, get response function. So we need to create it, of course, in the views. So in the views, we need to create a new function here, def, and then get response. And as usual here, request. Nothing, nothing is new here. Nothing is new. So what we, we need to do now is that in the index, we need to pass the URL that's going to handle this. So the URL is get a response. So here we need to say forward slash and then get a response. But, but there is a problem with this. The problem is that this get response doesn't exist in the main URL. This get response is a child of the main URL of the main app, the app, the app URL. If you open up, if you open up the main URL which exists in the project, you'll find that if you open up the URLs, you'll find that the main URL of this application is blog. So we need to add the word blog before the URL. So in the index here, you need to say before this get response, you need to say blog. So you need to say here, you need to say first blog because the URL, the the uh, prefix of this is is uh, is blog. It's not just get response. This is very important, and this mistake many many uh, developers fall for this mistake. So here we need to say for slash and then block and then for slash and then get response. So if your if your URL if your main app uh, um, has a different URL, for example, it, it could have, let's say, my app. If it's my app, then here it should be it should be my app and then forward slash and then get response. But my application is called blog. So blog and then forward slash get response. So this is very, very, very important. You need to pay attention to this. So now we know the URL. And now we have the URL set here in the function. And here this function is going to handle the, uh, is, is going to take the, the data from the URL. 